Here's the good news. As simple as it sounds, there is a new science, a systematic study of the structure and behavior of how you learn something new. How a new nugget of knowledge decides to make itself a part of you in your brain is a systematic framework called brain-centric design, BCD. It's like a recipe, a set of instructions for preparing a particular dish, including a list of the ingredients required used in the right amounts in the correct order at the proper time. Follow the recipe, get what you want. Management, consultants, training, sales, learning and development, human resources, parents, all present their big idea to others for the other's benefit. They want others to understand what they're presenting. They all want what they say to be understood, internalized, and acted upon. Now, this framework for learning is not the same framework we grew up with, the basic classroom setting where we sit down, don't talk, listen to a lecture, get tested, and then forget about 80% of what you endured by the next day. That old model hasn't changed much in a couple hundred years, and it's what we use today in person and online, and it still doesn't work. We still go to a room, sit down, shut up, and spend about 90% of that hour listening to one person talk, lecture, talk and lecture, and then a lot some time at the end of the hour for, are there any questions? What you do remember is that the chairs were uncomfortable and it lasted too long. So ask yourself, how can learning and presenting in a new framework be better for me than the kind of classroom I grew up with? Here's how it works. Let's look at a typical model for learning anything. Rather than lecture and read screens for an hour and then ask a few questions, here's how an hour is presented in the BCD framework. I spent almost two decades in higher education. I got my master's degree from Syracuse University and I got my PhD from the University of Maryland. Both of them are based in the United States. Surprisingly, after two decades in higher education, and teaching in the classroom for 10 plus years. I never learned how our brain works. I never learned how to teach, and I never learned how to teach in a way that our students are meant to learn. And uh, I feel so lucky and fortunate to become a student of BCD to work with Rich, to work with Kiran. They are amazing mentors and their BCD program has helped me become a much, much, much better teacher, educator, and entrepreneur. And uh, learning the BCD approach also helps me understand finally why the old teaching approach does not work why students are so disengaged sitting in the classroom. I finally understand everything. I finally understand how to present myself and how to structure my lessons and how to structure my PowerPoint presentation, presentations and uh, so much more. So I highly recommend the BCD approach to any educator, teacher and uh, entrepreneur pretty much Whoever has to, to present, has to train others regarding uh, information, whatever expertise, whatever subject matter that you cover. And uh, this is a great program that you should check out. When we talk of structures in BCD, let this graphic represent a solid hour of instruction. And this is where it's different. Rather than just an hour of listening to the teacher talk, this hour is broken into five distinct pieces so that your brain can process the information that's being sent to it. The first part is what we call initial thoughts where we introduce the concept of being taught and then challenge you in some way to learn a little more about it. What you learn a little more about is from different perspectives. These perspectives touch on multiple lobes in your brain. The occipital lobe for sight, the temporal lobe for hearing, the parietal lobe for small motor functions, and the prefrontal cortex to get the executive functions engaged in the game. From there, we give you a couple minutes to reflect, asking you three questions about the content you've just consumed. What was surprising? What did I already know but now see in a different light? And what do I still need help with? 
we move from the me phase to the we phase by having the classroom collaborate on these same three questions, round robin style and in private groups as they make sense of the learning. And after a time period has elapsed, we go to the report out phase of the class. And that's where each leader from each group stands up and tells everybody else exactly what was surprising, what they already knew but now see in a different light, and what they still need help with. It's at this point the facilitator answers only the questions that were posed to them from this group effort. Harvesting collective genius in the BCD challenge wheel format. The reason that we even thought about brain-centric design as opposed to any other kind of design has to do with having mental models and understanding deeply about how learning happens in the brain, how capacity is engaged and how much potential every single individual has. Prior to this, we had seen so many cases of executive function impairment in the business world, in, in, in situations in offices where people are crashing, where people are not performing to their fullest, and where HR in particular are losing a lot of eff money, effort, and, and capacity because people are not performing at their, at their maximum and, and their true potential. Very often, this is in the brain. People have the wrong models or have no models about what's happening and they're reactive instead of being able to encounter and engage their own structures. So, so for me, brain centric design is really the implementation of all of this neuroscience of learning into a field like uh, HR or in any kind of capacity in business where people need to be performing at their fullest capacity and where they're reaching not just a plateau but to ever, ever higher orders of their own potential. We light up the entire brain with the brain-centric design approach and let me prove it to you. In a typical classroom, you'll be lectured at and it lights up one part of your brain, the temporal lobe. With BCD, we go a little bit further. We'll fire up that occipital lobe. We'll engage the parietal lobe. We'll bring into focus your prefrontal cortex. And here's what's great about the approach. The entire brain lights up on one particular concept. The three benefits I have learned um, to tap into uh, from learning about brain-centric design and how people learn is one, um, is understanding what happens to people when they're scared or when um, fear kicks in, being able to explain that to them so that they can come back to their prefrontal cortex. Um, two, understanding what different parts of the brain need to have information be understood and be triggered. And three, um, I especially appreciated the long-term potentiation and how to literally like a domino effect, activate what you've taught somebody days, months, or years ago in using the process where they remember just about everything that you taught them. So I love that because it gives me the tools that I need to help people anchor to the information that I share and teach. Brain-centric design, how the brain processes information and how the brain loves to learn. It's how to take your nugget of knowledge on a journey from your mind to another's so they deeply understand it, never forget it, and do with it what you planned on them doing with it in the first place. And for the student, their potential is liberated, as instead of just sitting in class and absorbing talk, they are challenged, exposed to multiple perspectives on the subject, working with, seeing it differently, predicting outcomes, while collaborating, reflecting, revising their thinking, and getting what they need to make sense of what was just presented. It's not clever, it's science. Brain-centric design, how the brain processes information and how the brain loves to learn.